Hi, this is Albert van Dijk, and in the second video on passive microwave remote sensing, I want to have a quick look at some of the applications uh, of passive microwave uh, remote sensing and how we uh, actually measure it uh, using satellites. Uh, so in the previous video, we talked about um, brightness temperature, we talked about emissivity and polarization, and um, here I want to show one uh, way that we can use um, those different features uh, for uh, uh, mapping the properties of the surface. In the top graph here, what you see is the emissivity uh, of the uh, of particular of different surfaces indicated by the different colors in different frequencies or wavelengths uh, in the microwave spectrum. And you can also see two colors, uh, two lines for each color. So there's the darker color, which is the emissivity uh, in the vertical polarization, and then there's the lighter color, which shows you uh, the um, uh, uh, emissivity in the horizontal polarization. So in this case, that is for uh, ocean, in other words, for water. Uh, and then you see other lines here, you see for snow, there's not that much difference between the horizontal and the vertical polarization in terms of emissivity. Uh, you can see that uh, here for wetland, there is a difference. Uh, and uh, uh, here for in the green for desert, there's also a difference. Uh, and particularly water has got quite different emissivities in vertical versus horizontal polarizations. And we can use that quite effectively. For example, we can use it to map out where water is on the surface. Uh, and we can do that using the polarization ratio, PR, uh, 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 which is basically looking at the brightness temperature uh, within vertical polarization. And remember that the brightness temperature is the temperature uh, that the uh, observed object appears to have if you assume that it is a black body. Uh, in, in other words, it has an emissivity of 1. So we measure the irradiance from the object, we assume that the emissivity of 1 is 1, and then we work out uh, what the temperature is uh, with Planck's law uh, that uh, agrees with that. And then uh, we sub uh, basically to clarify that polarization ratio, we subtract the vertical uh, brightness temperature minus the horizontal polarization brightness temperature uh, and divide that by the sum of those two. So it's a normalization as you often see in uh, remote sensing indices. And if you do that for different frequencies you get different results. So here's uh, uh, an example of flooding in uh, Outback Australia in the Channel Country uh, that you can see quite clearly on this uh, 89 gigahertz uh, so quite high frequency uh, 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 imagery. You can also see the effects of the data collection, uh, as, as I'll come back to later. Um, but um, the main thing I wanted to point out here is that the, the image is quite sharp, and you quite clearly see water bodies here uh, stand out. Uh, but you can also see some other effects. A part of the uh, northern tip of Australia is disappeared, and that's because there is a big uh, cloud system there with uh, raindrops in it. And so while cloud uh, in its own right doesn't necessarily affect uh, microwave transmissions, the raindrops in clouds uh, do do impact, particularly the higher frequencies. And you can see a bit of a bend of cloud here as well. So particularly the higher frequencies of microwave uh, are not immune to, um, to uh, atmospheric effects. Uh, if you look at this lower frequency image, you first of all see it's more blurry, and that's because the footprint needs to be bigger to collect enough energy to map out. But you also um, uh, will be able to see in this image that uh, the, the effects of cloud have now disappeared. I don't see these cloud effects anymore, uh, and I still see very clearly uh, stand out the, uh, the wet uh, uh, waters uh, at the surface here in the Channel Country. Another thing you can do with the passive microwave remote sensing is actually not look at the ground surface, but look at the vegetation part of the uh, of the Earth. So um, the uh, the thing here is that the Earth surface, of course, the solid Earth emits uh, passive microwave radiation, uh, and that depends on soil moisture, particularly as we saw that the the difference between dry uh, materials and water uh, is considerable when you look at the electric constant. Um, they uh, the, the Earth's surface emits uh, in polarization, uh, in different polarization, in different strengths, I should say. And then the vegetation intercepts some of that uh, and 
uh, also there's a polarization effect there. And so if you can determine separately how much of the uh, emitted radiation, passive microwave radiation, is intercepted by the vegetation, then you've got a measure of how much water is in the vegetation. Because essentially it is the water in the vegetation that interacts with the passive microwave radiation uh, in the main. That's a very large part of the, uh, of the effect the vegetation has on emitted radiation. And that is typically expressed either in transmissivity, so how much radiation is let through, if you like, the fraction that is let through, you could say, uh, or in optical depth, which is, has got an inverse relationship, uh, which is some measure of the, um, the depth in millimeters of water, let's say, uh, of uh, uh, water, of, uh, of vegetation contained water. Now, one nice thing is, um, is that if uh, you can back out that value, uh, and you do that using this transfer equation, and I won't really explain it other than to say you've got to take account of uh, radiation that doesn't even interact with the veg vegetation, that which is directly emitted by the vegetation, that which is emitted by the vegetation and then bounces off the Earth's surface, uh, and uh, you have to look at those different components separately, and this is called the radiative transfer model. Um, but if you do that and you get a good value of optical depth, uh, you can actually relate it to above-ground biomass, and that's what this figure shows here. It's a recent paper that we did a few years ago where we showed that you can get a reasonable estimate of biomass, uh, in this case in, uh, in tons per hectare, uh, by looking at the vegetation optical depth. And this is the sort of relationship. You can, as you can see, that it's not a usually accurate relationship, but it's a very useful relationship nonetheless. So what sort of uh, satellite instruments do we need to measure this? Well, there's different ways, I suppose. Uh, here's an example of, uh, of a fairly typical passive microwave sensor uh, that uh, uh, scans ahead of itself. So it, it, another feature of passive microwave radiation is it best, it's best measured at an angle of around about 50 degrees uh, to, uh, to NADA. And so um, you see that the, uh, the um, instrument scans uh, with a mirror, again, uh, along a line at, you know, ahead of the actual sensor. So again, here there's a scan angle, uh, so it, it, it sort of turns around. The, the little sort of uh, uh, picture here that shows the uh, the uh, sensor. I mean, it, actually, it looks a lot like a satellite dish, uh, and it works in the same principle that it it uh, collects radiation over a larger area. So to get that footprint, we need a collecting device, and that's what this does. So it collects the radiation and focuses it on the on the sensor, and that swivels around, uh, and that's how you get your, uh, your uh, image formed, if you like. Um, uh, more recently, uh, uh, people have realized that wouldn't it be nice if we could measure more accurately in the L-band. So the L-band is a much longer wavelength, uh, where in principle you should get much better soil moisture measurements. Uh, but it's also, because of that uh, longer wavelength, there's a lot less energy, and typically you would have to deal with a much larger footprint. So uh, these uh, space engineers or these instrument engineers thought, well, this is a nice problem to get our teeth in. And what they designed is something that is uh, an idea derived from radio astronomy, where you're basically going to array of sensors, uh, uh, let's say an array of satellite dishes, I'll call it that for the, for the sake of argument, uh, and uh, that really increases the amount of energy that you're, uh, you're measuring. But then, of course, you have to work out where exactly that signal came from, and from that back out for each um, grid cell, if you like, what was the uh, emissions from that particular uh, grid cell. And that's what you see here. So we get a very funky sort of uh, uh, a total sample. So, so the, all these sensors collect a, uh, uh, an area that looks a bit like this. And then we have to try and back out from all the individual measurements what the emissions were from each of these points. Now one of the problems with this uh, particular wavelength is it was supposed to be free because radio astronomers uh, uh, use this, it's an important w a wavelength for them, uh, and so it was assumed that uh, this uh, wavelength was, was free of interference. But as it turned out, a lot of military uh, 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 stations and whatnot thought, well, that's a nice clean band, and they use it for their communications as well. So you see examples of, of that here and here. There's nothing to do with natural features. These are uh, basically radio stations. And so there's been a big effort to try and clean up, if you like, the sources of, uh, of uh, radiation with, with pretty good success. And if you remove that, uh, then you get something like this. 
And in a previous video, we, we talked about the SMEP mission, which uh, had the interesting feature of having both a passive and an active uh, microwave sensor on board, uh, which uh, would have really allowed to, to, if you like, downscale or sharpen the coarser passive microwave measurements with the radar measurements. But as we know, unfortunately, the radar instrument uh, on recognition failed. Okay, well, that uh, concludes this second video on passive microwave remote sensing.